I've combined my two passions, economics and Game of Thrones, to come up with an economic analysis of Westeros. I scoured the pages of the first five books to find clues about the financial situation in the Seven Kingdoms. Here's what I found. First of all, the Iron Throne needs to get its finances in order. The Crown has been spending and accumulating debt. Unfortunately, none of this spending has been invested in long-term growth. The Throne spends on lavish parties and jousting competitions and has ongoing expenses due to the War of the Five Kings. In Book 1, Ned Stark says the Mad King left the treasury flowing with gold, and Littlefinger has managed to increase revenue tenfold during his time as Master of Coin. Yet somehow, the Crown is over six million golden dragons in debt. It owes three million dragons to the Lannisters, two million to the Iron Bank of Braavos, the most powerful bank in the known world, and another million to the Church of the Seven. The Crown's sizable income barely covers the interest on its debt, and Cersei has already suspended payments to the bank and the church. It seems to me the Lannisters are going to need a new motto. Based on the unsustainable debt dynamics of the Iron Throne, it seems the probability of default is high, which means the Iron Bank is no doubt getting restless. But if Tommen wants to stay on the throne, or rather if Cersei wants to keep him there, he's going to have to keep fighting for it, which is going to be expensive. Since more debt isn't an option, the throne has increased taxes. The crown has imposed a tax on the tens of thousands fleeing to King's Landing. Tywin even levied a tax on the brothels. The other option is printing money, which is difficult with a commodity-based currency. But there is some speculation, based on a few pointed lines in books two and three, that Littlefinger was printing more coins by diluting the amount of gold in each. Though, these statements could be attributed to Littlefinger's incredible business acumen. But there are two sides to every golden dragon coin. Debt isn't so bad if the economy's growing, but there isn't any good news here. Government spending can sometimes lead to growth if the gold is spent on infrastructure, capital investment, and public goods. But that was not the case. The Iron Throne went into massive debt throwing parties and fighting a civil war. The Westeros economy is based on agriculture and has little by way of international trade. The people of Westeros reap what they sow, which has been less and less lately. Ever since the mountain ravaged the Riverlands, farmers have fled, fields have burned, and equipment has been destroyed. And the fertile lands of the Reach have been cut off from King's Landing. And not to mention, winter is coming. And though most of us are too young to remember the last winter, I think it's safe to say it will make farming extremely difficult. So all signs point to financial instability and negative economic growth. We've already seen food prices increase in King's Landing. With winter ahead and expectations of even less supply, food prices will continue to rise. However, expect the price of services to fall. Unemployment is high. I suspect the supply of prostitutes is on the rise. And discretionary spending has evaporated for most of the kingdom, which means the price of some companionship will go down. There's only one positive I can see coming out of this mess. It's that House Lannister is likely to lose most of its wealth and power. The Iron Bank of Bravos is known for getting its due and they aren't going to simply write off the debt of the Iron Throne. They'll step in and support someone else to take over the throne, provided the usurper promises to honor the outstanding debt. This is doubly bad for the Lannisters. Not only would they lose control of the throne, but the throne owes the Lannisters millions of golden dragons, a debt which is unlikely to be honored if someone else takes the throne by force. So at least something good will come out of the impending crisis of Westeros. House Lannister will be hit harder than anyone, which will make winter a little bit warmer for the rest of us.